uh, doing some Marvel Crisis Protocol model building and painting. I wanted to get you guys an early video today. Uh, we'll do some more videos tonight as well. So I'll be back with more painting because uh, it's going to be a paint-filled day um, for my videos. And uh, I wanted to um, show off a couple things. So we're going to do... I don't typically show terrain off in these videos, but I'm going to be doing that. And uh, this is kind of my formal review for um, the um, Deadpool um, Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature game. It's Deadpool, Deadpool and Bob, Agent of Hydra. Uh, we're going to take a look at the box. Uh, and I want to, as always, give a shout out to my sponsor for this video, which is uh, Undiscovered Realms. You guys can check out a link to them in my channel. Uh, they are awesome guys. They have a large assortment of different things. Everything from tabletop gaming stuff to um, uh, Magic the Gathering to Pokemon to all of the things below and above. Um, they are what I get. All, they are who I get all of my uh, stuff from, uh, no matter what. Uh, and they are they are definitely hooking me up with the Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff, and I hope to be doing some events with them as well. So you'll, you'll hear more about them through the channel um, as we go. Um, and like I said, I also um, I don't really talk about terrain that much, but I've been working on this terrain for my Marvel Crisis Protocol table. Uh, and I figured I'd show it off because uh, I actually painted an entire Doctor Strange house and didn't show you guys any of it. But um, I'll probably show it on another video as a final product. Um, but I figured I'd show you a little bit of me painting it and getting it done um, and some really cool little um, details that I'm doing. So we'll do that a little bit later. I'm going to pop the terrain out for right now. Um, and I'll we'll, we'll spotlight that in just a moment. Um and actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to have to do a little bit more work on it. But uh, I wanted to do a formal like review of this uh, Deadpool set. So uh, as you can see, um, uh, so you can see the retail on that, which, again, for a... Well, I don't know why I'm getting things. Sorry, guys. My calendar decided to show me stuff, even though I deliberately cut off my internet. Um, <laughs> on my phone, because uh, I do use my iPhone for my recording, if you guys ever wondered. Um, but yeah, in this set, um, we have Crisis Protocol Miniature Game. So for folks that don't know, Marvel Crisis Protocol is a tabletop miniature game, um, literally a skirmish-based Marvel game. Uh, it is amazing. They have done amazing amounts of pieces. Um, and this is the latest Deadpool piece that came out. Um, and you can see it's Deadpool Hydra. I was going to say, for the price... Um, one of the things that attracted me to this game, obviously, besides me being a huge superhero fan and, and uh, comic book fan, was in fact um, the um, was in fact the um, price of the miniatures. So uh, one thing that I love about this game is that they're very very cost effective with the miniatures. Very very good. Uh, so I mean normally. Not to sort of compare it against the big the big guys, but if you were doing Games Workshop, for instance, um, you'd be paying, you know, uh, essentially uh, easily for something like this. Um, it's got a terrain piece and figures. You'd be paying probably seventy or eighty dollars. So, because um, usually their general model is about twenty five to thirty per character. Even if you're getting like a small character, so like uh, if you get a hero, for instance. And I'm, and I'm not making this stuff up, so I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to throw shade at folks, but, you know, um, like, again, you get a miniature like this, it's a hero, one Citadel miniature, you're definitely paying about 30 or 40 for that. Um, so I, that's one thing that I loved about this game, is that it's that, and then they're highly detailed miniatures. So, you know, uh, to give you guys uh, a little bit more of a bird's eye view of one, you know, there's Ant-Man, and I actually painted this up. You guys can check out a video of me doing that. Um, but they are very highly detailed, sculpted bases. Oops. Um, very, very good, well-made models. Um, so that was really intriguing to me. So they're great detailed models. And, of course, IP, they're based on another... They're based on someone else's IP. And I always find that amazing because you would think with the licensing fees and other stuff, they would actually cost more, and they'd be more in line with the GW model. Um, but 
Game Factory or not. Um, welcome to the Deadpool character pack brought to you by me, the amazing Deadpool. Okay, so I love the fact that there are... And, and what I love about this company, too, which I should say is Atomic Mass Games, which I didn't say the name of the company that makes the game. Um, I was about to say Asmodi Games, which is not their their, their name. Um, but Atomic Mass Games, uh, think about it. It's pretty crazy. It's like this is their first game. And obviously, w what a game to hit it out of the park with to get the license to do a Marvel game. That's good. Like it's like almost like making instant money. Um, <laughs> I always say that, but I like. But one of the things I love about this company is that everyone that works for it is very comic centric. Uh, they are all comic book fans. Uh, they all love comic books, so they put a lot of love and effort into this. And the models you get are very comic accurate. They are really comic forward rather than MCU forward. Um, and most people might say, "Well, I, when I held up that Ant Man, you're like, oh, well, it was painted like the MCU. It looks exactly like the MCU." Well, that's because it, people don't realize it, but the obviously the MCU versions of the characters, they have now made them look like that in the comic books because, again, Marvel's owned by Disney. Disney's all about synergy. If you go see a movie, they want you to be able to pick up a comic or merchandise with that character. So the easiest way to do that is to make the character look like the MCU version or tilt the character more to that look versus their more classic look. But that's what I love about this game. You can paint, of, of course, your characters to be whatever you want like my wolverine i went very uh the uh, x-men 90s cartoon um so you can go to those places and if you want to see those videos uh some of the more recent videos are on my obviously twitch channel but you can also go to my um youtube channel if you're not a subscriber to that already please subscribe uh because you can i archive the painting videos up there as well um so you can see them in both places if you want to be live with us or if you want to check them out later on um so as you can see, I love already we're starting with the narrative on the box of Deadpool breaking the fourth wall as he does. Um, terminal cancer patient Wade Wilson. I, the aforementioned Wade Wilson, uh, was transformed into the incredible superpowered hero Deadpool. And I like how he's also claiming himself as a hero, even though he's not always a hero in the comic book. Uh, thanks to the nerds at the Weapon X program, I was granted on off-the-charts healing factor, which allows me to recover from even the most gruesome. For the love of all that is holy, look away, t Timmy, injuries. Oh, that is funny. I love this. I'm also basically a ninja, expert marksman, and master in multiple martial arts, uh, including the deadliest of all, karate. <laughs> um, and I speak, like, nine languages, but my greatest superpower of all is my dazzling wit, an immeasurable charm. Though teams like the X-Men and Avengers would literally kill to have someone like me on their roster, um, I, <laughs> I, the aforementioned Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool, remain Los Lobos, a lone wolf who hunts the moonlight desert in search... This is amazing. I, I want to meet who wrote this. <laughs> search of the only meal that will satisfy my endless hunger justice <laughs> oh my god this is so awesome also they have been uh, also they haven't been returning any of my calls or emails a cowardly young man bob was persuaded to join the criminal organization hydro by his wife who accused him of not being able to hold down a steady job this is this is awesome this is in the comic book i love agent bob um uh, the thought of a stabby career with the dental plan with the dental plan also appealed to Bob, though he was ultimately disappointed to find out that Hydra does not, in fact, offer full dental. Like AIM, Bob's life was forever changed when he met Deadpool during the Merc with the Mouth's assault on the outpost. Um, Deadpool convinced Bob to to assist him with his mission. And the two became lifelong partners. Um, these days, the H and Bob's chest no longer stands for Hydra, but for Hero. <laughs> this is awesome. I love that. So you can already see we get a ton of stuff in here. You get one Deadpool miniature, one Hydra Bob miniature, one Taco Truck miniature, um, two bases, character, stat cards, Team Tactic cards. Tokens. Um, but what is also more true now, it wasn't true in their first couple of figures, but now they are giving you a lot more alt alternatives. 
So they've started to do that where they're giving you alternative heads, alternative looks. So you can see you have an alternative head for Bob and Rocket. Wait, what? Oh, and Rocket. I guess you I guess the swoosh is the alternative. And then I love that you can have I'm going to probably go with the with the dubious. I always love when Deadpool does the one eye open or you could just do the angry or you could do the love Deadpool with the love eyes which he's done in the comic book. So there's like a ton of alternate stuff in here which is pretty cool. So I am excited to open this sucker up and we will be doing a lot more of these models i literally have one two three four five boxes of bottles that we haven't done yet um and if you guys like me doing these reviews i'll do the review like i'm doing now which is kind of me building it um and then we can go on from there here's the stuff and now in the box, they are good about separating out the cards and the other stuff. So we have, of course, all of the card-based stuff. So I'll probably review those really quick, and then we'll just chuck those to the side. And then we'll start getting into the actual model. So we have a couple of different things that are in here. Let's see. Okay, so they don't come with alternative. All right, so we have a couple of different things. So first thing you get are what are called affiliate cards, uh, affiliation cards. So these are like kind of like team-up moves or special moves. So like for, you'll see unaffiliated. So this is a card you can take if he's not part of a team. And then you have one that says X-Force. So you would have to have your team of characters that you pick be X-Force. I'm going to talk a little bit about the basics of the game. Um, so we have two unaffiliated, and we have one that he has to be on a team. But as you can see with the unaffiliated one, if an allied cable is within... So there, this is actually specifically... If he's playing with Cable, if he's playing with Wolverine. So these are like conditionals. <laughs> so like first it's I have, this has got Bob, Agent of Hydra on it. It's got Wolverine on it. So there's like different stuff he can do. So like with Wolverine, if any allied Wolverine, Wolverine that is holding an object token is within two of, so that's a measurement within the game. Of Deadpool, place one object token held by Wolverine onto Deadpool. So basically... They can pass each other objects so that what that's good about is, let's say, because the way that the game works, you activate, it's it's an alternative activation game. So I may alternatively activate Wolverine because tactically I'll be by something that I want to pick up. Well, with this aff affiliation card, I can then be on my Deadpool turn um, and I can have him pass the object token. Now, this could be both a terrain mark a terrain piece it could be other object tokens that are like mission based right and you can see there the crisis specifies so these are for it's for you to move object tokens to people because tactically you might want to do that if they're all activating or maybe you need the token to get away and you want to get to a certain part of the board there's a lot of different reasons why you might do that uh, for Bob, if if an enemy, Agent Bob of Hydra is within two of Deadpool, you may remove a number of loaded tokens from from it. So that's got to be a mechanic in one of their powers. So he's got an affiliation that helps him get rid of those, um, which we'll find out. Then we have Chimichangas, which Deadpool may spend one power to play this card. Add a Chimichanga objective token asset to the game deadpool is now holding this token at the end of the character activation if it is holding a chimichanga token it gains one power i may remove one oh wound or one special condition so the chimichanga actually heals him that's actually pretty funny okay i like that 
Any character may use the following inner ability. Interact Chimichanga. Pick up the Chimichanga token. Oh, that's pretty funny. And then the affiliate one, which is pretty sneaky, sis. Hold on. Make sure that's not auto-focusing. Uh, recruit during the power phase. Any number of allied X-Force characters may spend two power each to play this card. Enemy characters must be within two inches of the character that spent the power to target them with attacks this round. Wait. Enemy characters must be within two of characters that spent. Oh. Enemy characters must be within two inches of the character that spent. Okay, so you can make them not get hit by long range. That's what that's for. Oh, that's cool. So it makes them have to come in close, and you may want to set somebody up to do that, like a Wolverine or something, so you get them in close to hit. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, and then there's our Chimichanga marker, which was tied to our affiliate card. I'm assuming that's going to be tied to one of Bob Caesar tokens. And then we have our character cards. So uh, like I was talking about before, you're going to build a force, and there is a crisis number so every scenario you play you guys are going to randomly draw out scenarios and then the scenario you play will have a crisis number that number is the like pool for making your force so you spend you can you can't have more than that number of characters on your team so you'll see he has a crisis mark of four no way i'm sorry he has a crisis marker of three Wow, he has wounds. He only has four. No. He only has four wounds? Really? I'm assuming he's got his healing factor. That's why they did that. But, oh, that's crazy. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the number of... Okay, so he's got stab. He's got bang. Let's just see here. Merc with a mouth. Choose any enemy character within three of this character. It loses two power. Um, a character may be affected by superpowers only once per turn. I know Karate. The character may roll one die in this attack and defense roll. Unicorns, rainbows, and sugar plum dancing through my head. The character cannot be pushed or advanced by effects from okay okay he does have healing factor too i was just about to say so he, they gave him a low wound count because he can heal two a turn so that's why they're giving him only four which makes total sense um and then so the way it works in marvel crisis protocol you will damage out a character's first side of their card and then once they get damaged, they get stunned, and then they flip over to their new side of their card. And then you have to damage them through that side, and then they uh, then they are taken off the table. Uh, now I'll go over his attack. Now, when you what you'll notice is as he gets to the other side, he will have different powers. He may get additional powers. His powers may work differently. Um, so we have. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to damage dealt. So again, it's a range of two. It's five on the attack, and it doesn't cost him any power to do this attack. So stab is a free ability. Actually, all of his abilities are free. Bang is also. You can do it four away. It hits for four die. And it's got some sort of, uh, bang. He can do bang, 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 bang. Uh, after this attack is resolved, this character may make another bang attack. The additional attack must target the original target character. The special rule may only be triggered by the first bang attack each action. And again, you can see here, he has to roll. There is a wild side of dice. If you roll wilds, they can do it. And I think you have to spend power? No. I don't know what that symbol is. And then after this attack... Rob, this character may make another. So he basically can attack you three times. If he keeps rolling wilds, he can multi-attack, which is insane. And then for three power, it's a six attack, two range. Dopindum, uh, Dodendum poke. 
Th uh, if this attack deals damage after the attack is resolved, the target character gains the bleed and slow. So basically moves slower and gets bleeding, which means he starts taking damage. And we already worked through these. And then on the other side of his card, all of this seems to be the same. The only thing that he gets added is, all right, now it's serious. This character, I'll, this character always counts as a healthy, healthy instead of injured for the purposes of contesting objectives. Oh, okay. So he always counts as if he's on his other side of his card because that is a factor when you are working out contending objectives. If you have an injured character and a healthy character, you actually win the objective in some scenarios. That's pretty funny. That is super, super funny. Um, now we're going to go to Bob, Agent of Hydra. So he is only a two crisis. Um, and he's only got three and three. So he's just got six hit points. Hydra Pistol. Uh, after this attack resolves, this character gains one power. It's free. Doesn't cost anything. Excessive violence. Okay. <laughs> the character may choose this attack only if it has a loaded token. Okay, so loaded is the rocket token. Um, after the attack is resolved, this character loses all loaded tokens it has. Before damage is dealt, other characters within two of the target character suffer. So it's an area attack. You get some hits if you're around them. Uh, around who he's attacking. Before damage is dealt, this character is thrown away from the target character. A small movement marker. This throw is resolved by the player controlling the target character. Then, if this character does not have a daze token, it suffers three damage. So, a uh, couple things to unpack there. The person who controls the character gets to decide where they go. That's important. Because most times with knockback or throwback, you get to pick where they go. So that could be very advantage because you can hit them into scenery. You can hit because in this game, all of the scenery and everything is destroyable. You can pick it up if it's the right size marker, and that's why characters have a size because they can pick up anything that is their size. Um, so you actually have the mechanic of picking people up and throwing them around. So uh, you can chuck people into other stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, Hydra Tactics, choose another allied character within two of this character. Place this character within one of the chosen character. Choose another allied character to place. Okay, so it's a way to do a free tactical move, like he's commanding people places. Um, make it spicy, Bob. Action, this character gains loaded token. Okay, so you could pay eight to get the loaded token or use that affiliated card that gets the loaded token. This character gains one loaded token. At the start of the game. So that's kind of cool. You start out with it. Um, all these are the same. Before, No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's the same. That's the same. But how? So that's new. Uh, if this character does not have an activated token and would be KO'd having damage tokens placed on it, it gains Dazzle tokens instead. During the cleanup phase, you can... You would... Uh, when you would normally flip... This character card, as a result of a dazed token, it remains on its injured side, and that character loses three power. So he actually can't die. Uh, if at any time, this is the only character you control. Oh, okay. I was just about to say, how do they stop you from doing that? So you can't... So he cannot be the last character. So you can kill everybody else, but Bob literally can't die. But he just keeps getting dazed. That's weird. Okay. These are very weird mechanics for these characters. Um, but, I mean, it's it's Deadpool. What do you expect? I, I expected it. And it's kind of fun. Like, the characters they're coming out with, Ant-Man and Wasp, they had a similar thing. Because um, they introduced, like, shrinking, which no other characters had that before. Um, so they're, they're starting to build other, like, game mechanics and stuff into the game, which is very cool. All right. And then we get this guy, but what it is secretly is not only is it credits and all this other stuff, which is read the first, 
Uh, read through the instruction booklet to assemble your miniatures. Be sure to use a pair of sharp hobby clippers to remove it. It's basically telling you some stuff, but then it will also be your assembly guide. And we have a couple of things. But what I also love about this bottle company, and you'll see it, the assemblies are very simple. It's usually very clean, a few pieces, and nothing too crazy. So what I'm going to do is, as I normally do, pop this open. Whoa. So I'm going to pop this open. And we are going to get to opening this. But before we do that, I am going to just step away from the camera for a moment. So I'm going to step away from the camera for a moment. I will be right back. So I will see you guys in just a momentary thing.
Hey guys, sorry for that. Hopefully not all of you left. Alright, sorry guys. I'm not trying to keep you at bay. Alright, let's open this sucker up. Let's do some model building. Oh, Jesus. And as always, I've got too much stuff on my, on my desk. So we're going to go over what we got here in sprues. We're going to go over all kinds of stuff. So, um, And I'm, and I'm going to go over a little bit of why I like this company's way of doing things. So, Because I think we got... And I'll, I'll also... Oh, part of my... Part of my thing's coming out. Okay. No, one of the pieces just popped out. So one of the things I love is that they give you all these little plastic baggies. I always keep these guys because they're great for storing other games. And I don't know. I feel like they might have done that kind of on purpose. Oh, this is awesome sauce. All right. All right. Bear with me, guys. So first thing off the gate that I love is... Their bases. So they basically have, I love that they give you, now every single model kit they make, they always give you the same four bases. Um, but it is nice because uh, you probably noticed I only got two figures in this kit. My guess is, I don't I don't know of a kit yet they've done that has four, uh, actually it's not true. So Ant-Man and the Wasp was the one because you had the minis and you had the, the smaller versions of Ant-Man and Wasp. And you had the um, other versions of those characters. So uh, so they, they did give you four. But for the most part, they always are giving you about two in a pack. So they usually come two characters. Um, and so they give you extra bases. So this comes in real handy because now I have a stockpile of these. So if I want to use them for other miniatures, if I want to do some customer mashups, you get stylized bases, which is always cool. It makes it so you don't have to necessarily put as much of the terrain bits you know, you can do a little bit of, like, you know, flocking or other stuff you want to do if you want to make it a little bit more weathered or whatever. Um, but, yeah, and then I love how they don't waste any piece of the sprue. They give you little debris, like junk and things, to customize the base with. So a bottle, a cup. Um, and you'll see they'll do this in other places as well, which I think is really cool. Um, and then you got your Deadpool sprue. And, obviously, we have our multi-heads of Deadpool there and other stuff. Um, we have our Agent Bob sprue, and you can see just how simple and clean and nice these models are. Like, the assembly is really nice. They're, they're you know, if you kind of put them up against the GW model, they are slightly bigger scale. So, for instance, if we put it, I, actually, you know what? I would say they're roughly in the same size as GW scale. So they are 32 millimeter scale, but I don't know what it is. It's just, maybe it's the way their model designer did it. It always feels like they're spacious. They're really nice and spacious models. Um, and then we have a lot of sprues for the chimichanga truck. Um, and there we go. And the chimichanga truck has one thing that is important. You'll notice a three here. So that three, remember how I said everything in the game has a height. Um, that three represents height. So a character that is height three can pick up objects that are three. So that is the idea behind the sprues. Um, so we're probably only going to get to the characters today. I may have to cut this video a little bit on the short side. So uh, let's get Deadpool gone. Let's start building him. Um, and then we can move on to the other stuff. I do apologize. I have to cut it short. Uh, that probably, you guys guessed, because of my little two-second thing um that is part of why i have to cut the video short but like i said we're going to come back with more more video more painting so i might have to postpone the scenery painting but we'll come back and do some more marvel protocol stuff now up until recently it was funny they were numbering their sprues but the instructions didn't actually have numbers on them but they have rectified that so that now their sprues definitely have numbers All right. 
And now you guys are probably going to say to yourselves, he just said that these models are really like a little bit. They have like a bigger size than the other models. And this doesn't look that way. Well, whoa. There we go. So it's funny. The torsos, they actually do snap. They usually have like little bits to snap in. But um, obviously, you uh, I should mention... That was interesting. Sorry, guys. My glue just decided to be make. Uh, oh, get uh, there. We go. Nice. And uh, that straightened out my glue bit. Yeah. And I'm using Gorilla Glue. I'm not using plastic glue. Uh, I say this in a lot of my other videos. I use Gorilla Glue because, uh, or Crazy Glue, because I like that Crazy Glue sets a lot faster than um, plastic glue does. And I find that plastic glue, uh, you know, because the theory behind how plastic glue works, if you guys never ever thought about it. Um, is they, um, it actually melts the plastic. That's how it forms bonds. And I've had some issues. Excuse me. Didn't mean to be gross. Um, I had some issues in my model making career where I've actually messed up or couldn't get something set properly. Um, and it actually caused the, um, plastic to deteriorate and i wouldn't i wasn't able to assemble the model so uh but you guys can see like even cutting the sprues i like how they give you a lot of room so you don't have to use like an incessantly low, small cutter it's easy and simple and you're just you know it's not it's no fuss no muss um they and they're starting to give you more customizing but it's very very just simple assembly like this bit into this bit into this bit and also one of the things that they do that I, I like is, I don't know, they're, the person who's doing their model design, they really have figured out a way to do seams, and they're not doing so, like a company, you know, I, I feel like I just keep, like, ragging on Games Workshop, but um, a company like Games Workshop, what they tend to do, so lately when they're making their models, they do, you know, they do the whole, like, and, and the, the reality of why they do it, they do it for seams. So they'll do it where, like, half the model's on one piece and it's, like, snaked in another way in this piece versus, like, kind of the more traditional um, model building where it's it's more like arms, legs. Like, you, you kind of are still building it in the pieces of a person. Um you know, uh, whereas they're doing it where, like, you know, you'll have, like, the heads on, like, you'll you'll be doing the right leg, but the right leg actually has the head on it, and, you know, it's, like, more um, robust, because the reason they're doing that is because for some of the more complicated detail, they're trying to hide a seam, so by doing that, the seams are not um, relevant, um, but what these guys found out how to do is, and maybe it's just because they're doing superheroes and, and superhero costumes lend themselves a little better to seaming, but they figured out a way to use the costumes lining and seams to actually make the model glue look real good. Um, okay, now this is always tricky. I always get screwed up. All right, so nine's on that side. Um, Awesome. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. As I say, and this is more my preferred method of gluing. Because, um, oh, there we go. Because I'm using crazy glue, if I put a little, if I put a little too much crazy glue, it kind of, it kind of goes out on the seam. So it'll actually spill out a little bit. Oh, okay. Nine. It 
Did that happen? Did the sword break? Now there's a little imperfection in the sword. Yeah. Alright, sorry guys. So what happened was, and this happens sometimes, you can get it you can you can get what's called a splinter seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Put some glue on that. Yeah. So what that is 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 that when they when they molded this, uh, when they molded this sword. There was a little crack. There was a little imperfection in that plastic. And then when I did the little snip, sometimes that little snip is just enough force to pop that little that little crack. It was like a hairline crack, and then I popped it with the with the clip. Um, which is why usually when I'm doing these things, I'll try to um, sorry guys, I'll try to. Um, cut at sensitive place like that see so, so you can see the stress mark whenever you see that like the plastic it gets that white stress that means there was stress there and it broke it like started to chip it so what i did was i just put some glue on it so it'll look um i mean unfortunately i think it's going to always look like a bad sword so i probably probably what i'm going to do is i'll probably break it but just for the purposes of getting the model together right now i just put a little bit of glue on top of it so it just will it won't fall off in place um but i'll probably i might snap that and re-glue it or 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 work on it differently once i get it once i get it settled oh and then going back to what i was saying before because we're using super glue uh, gotta find the sweet spot for this arm there we go. sorry I, uh, I hadn't lined up the arm properly, so it was actually jointed. I wanted to do that before the glue actually set. But you could see, pretty fast assembly. Like, it is, it, uh, we're almost done. Um, we have a little detail, which is the gun holster. And I love how they do, like, even something as simple as the gun holster. They, like, even Captain America, like, the actual satchels or pockets that were on his belt, I had to glue them on together. Uh, so it was just very highly, greatly detailed. So their model designers are on the hook. They're really good. And we should see. Now, sometimes with the gun holster. Or like little details like that. Nope. So, all right. Let me show you guys. It's hard to show, though. But you can see they actually built ridges. So it is supposed to go right on the ridges that are there. And it's funny, they actually put little X's on it, which I think is amazing. So again, just the attention to model design and detail is so good. You know, so good. So see, so easy, so simple. Um, again, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm always blown away. And their, their attention to detail and, their, and the attention to characters are so good. All right. Uh, we are going with the slight... I think I'm going to go with the slightly raised eyebrow Merc. I always like... I love that. It's actually my favorite uh, face of his to draw. Whenever I draw a Deadpool, I always like to draw that expression because I think it's just funny. Because if you were it thinking about it, um, at least the more modern version of Deadpool is very, very much... Um, he was very much a reflection of Spawn. He was meant to look like Spawn. That wasn't on an accident. He wasn't, it wasn't his original intention. He, wasn't, like, he didn't originally look like Spawn because Spawn wasn't out when he originally appeared. But as they reworked his character... Um, the, the, he started to take on some of those aspects, like a comedic version of Spawn. 
Um, the real version of Spawn in the Marvel Universe is um, Nightwatch. Nightwatch is actually supposed to be Spawn. It was them ripping off Spawn when he came out. For all you comic geeky fans out there. Um, and there's our missile. And you can see they already have what we need to pop him in there. I'm going a little ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Is that how we get the foom in there? And then does he stand on the foosh? Is there a hole in the foosh? Oh, no, the foosh sits inside. So the foosh is going to sit in this crevice. Okay, interesting. I'm kind of doing stuff out of order. Sorry if I am. Uh, we got to get our our swords. So again, this is another one of those like delicate cuts. So I always like to just try to look and see where I'm cutting on this because you don't, you know, it's another tiny detail piece that we got to get on the figure. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna get Deadpool and Agent Bob done. I may have to pause on the Chimichanga truck. Just because uh, I have to, I have to run an errand that I didn't, I didn't completely think I was gonna do, and quite frankly, I was, I was thinking about doing this video a little bit earlier today, but I didn't realize I was gonna, you know, a lot of you guys would watch it. So, you know, the good news is that starting uh, the next few Mondays, I might be able to do videos earlier like this. Um, but we're going to probably also, I'm going to really ramp up the primetime videos uh, so you guys can get a few more. Um, all right, so then we have our missile, which is the next step. I glued those two pieces together. Um, and then for the foosh, let's see how that fits in there. All right, so, all right, it's kind of molded. So it's it's it it kind of fits in there. It's uh it's a little bit of an interesting fit. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue where I think the letters are gonna hit. Um, yeah, it's not. It 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 fits. It definitely does. Um, actually, it fits pretty damn well. Actually, yeah, they really they really like. Oh man, the model designers at this company are so good. Like it, it really did. Like I dry, I did dry fit it. Um, yeah, it, 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 they did actually like sculpt it right. So and I and I feel like they they're not they have to be using. I mean I know they're using they definitely using three D sculpts. So they're using computers to sculpt it. But um and I mean I don't think they're three D printing this stuff. That's awesome. That's unbelievable. And I, again, to be pretty complex model, but very, very simple assembly. I think it's got some beautiful detail. There's definitely some other really nice pieces to that. But it was a quick, easy installation. It was not anything I would shake a stick at to say it was hard. Um, oh, was I... Why do I have to? Was I able? Oh, I could have done either alternate leg. There was also an alternate leg option. Did not know that. Was there an alternate body option too? Oh, shoot. What's the difference? Oh, no.
I didn't go with the alternate torso. Would it have changed the position? I think it would have changed the position of his arms. I didn't realize that. So they give you a lot of alternate fits. I mean, so you could, I could theoretically, with what's left, I could have some fun and maybe do an, I could do like an undead Deadpool. Or I could do like something else. Definitely could play with these parts to make like an alternative. I could even do maybe dead, deadhead, which is dead, uh, a version of Deadpool that, um, so his head gets severed. And I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, his head got cut off. He regrew his head. And then Deadpool became another version of him. Uh, yeah, Headpool is his name. I have to go back and f I have to figure out the origin of Headpool now. Um, <laughs> all right, so we'll build Agent Bob real quick, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it, and I'm definitely doing Agent Bob with the chef's hat. That is happening. Um, let's just do him real quick. And then, like I said, we will forego the chimichanga truck. Um, I will be back with another video tonight. Um, so if you guys are enjoying this video, um, come on back. Agent Bob, very small sprue, uh, very simple build. So we'll get this done in a couple of minutes. Um, and like I said, just a hilarious character in the comic books. Because, of course, in like total Deadpool fashion... Um, he, of course, you know, becomes friends with a Hydra agent. And, you know, in, in Deadpool's weird way, he convinces these characters. Uh-huh. There we go. Chef's hat. What I'm doing now, um, just to do this a little quicker, I'm just popping out all of the pieces. I'm not going to pop out the, har the arms because I always like to do those differently. Um, so again, and you'll see how like what I love about this company is they make it easy to assemble, and they if they have multiple kits, they make it so even like the the chest or the pieces, you can't get anything really wrong. Um, like you can't assemble something wrong. There's only like one place that the that the piece can go. So even on the arms, they're conscious about like the right arm and left arm having different nubs. So it's easier for you to find what you're supposed to put in there. So it's like, you. Can, I mean, in this case, it's pretty hard to screw this up because He's got, like, a very distinct arm. It has a rocket launcher on it, so how can you mess that up? But um, they they really do make it so it is not hard for you as the assembler to uh, to know what has to go there. But they even make... I love that they make the, the knobs different sizes so you can just pop your pieces in. And honestly, like, I... It, you know, and I maybe it's just because I'm so familiar with the content. Um, it, it, they are a joy to build because it's I don't usually have to look at the instructions. Like sometimes I do. Oh, look at that! Look at that! All his glory, chef. The I love the chef's hat because that's that is one of the storylines. If you're not familiar with it, that Agent Bob. So the whole way the chimichanga truck comes up is that obviously the simplest of simple. Deadpool likes chimichangas. But um, the other reason it comes up is that Agent Bob actually drives the chimichanga truck. So when it is introduced, it is Deadpool and, and Agent Bob that are riding around in a chimichanga truck fighting bad guys. So I don't want to miss any detail. So I'm, I'm going to slow up a little bit. I mean, I think I know where all these details are supposed to go. But I'm going to just slow up for a minute. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to build my Agent Bob in, I don't want to say record time, but I am kind of speeding through the build. Um, and, I, and I don't want to go too far ahead. I mean, the nice thing about these guys, and you guys can see, hot sauce. 
because uh, and that's why I love I love it because it's all about that chimichanga truck. I, I, I if I'm not mistaken, they go undercover. Is the story in the comic book like? Well, I mean, I should I should say something. I should say it loosely. Deadpool and undercover. You know, that's that's kind of an oxymoron in itself. You know, Deadpool can never really truly go undercover. You know, he he could definitely do kind of his, you know, quote unquote like Looney Tunish um <laughs> Yeah. And, the, and this is why when you go for the speed round of model building, ah, doesn't always work out because, you know, your model is, too much of your model is kind of wet. Okay. Ah, I hate this. I hate. Let me just hold that for a minute. Please no. Again, this is part of this is the crazy glue aspect because I'm I'm using crazy glue. I'm not using plastic glue. So you know the other piece to plastic glue that obviously is a huge help is it doesn't stick to human hands. Crazy glue, of course, sticks all over your hands. Um, now we have to do some other little details. Which oh no, okay, they do talk about them. So we have a gun holster and what looks like a satchel that we have to put on. All right, so we're gonna do gun holster and satchel. All right, and then like I said, because I love their models, pretty easy to know where the gun holster goes. It literally has an outlay of a gun holster. So we could just You just pop that right in. Oops, sorry. And then it's hard to see, but that's our little satchel nub. Just gonna put a little bit of glue there. Now, for anyone that might be screaming at the screen right now, you're probably gonna say something really intelligent, which is, why are you not using tweezers? The answer is it. The answer to that question is because I'm stupid. <laughs> so you're 100 percent right that I should be using tweezers. Um, I try to do things fast because I get impatient. Because <sighs> obviously some of my um, gluing woes would be solved. by just simply using a decent set of tweezers. <laughs> and I do have them. All right, there's our Agent Bob. Damn, these models look good. I love, I love all of the models. And like I said to everybody, if I ever stop playing this game, it doesn't matter. I have some really awesome painted models of my uh, Marvel stuff. So uh, I am not gonna base these right now. But uh, we got the Deadpool done. I am in. I am in awe of this model. It is super cool, super awesome. They did an amazing job with it. Um, I just love how this looks. And again, as always, just so fitting for Deadpool. It's over the top. It's dramatic. It's big. It's huge. Um, it's exactly what you want. That swoosh. So very. I just love the comic. Obviously, the very comic aspect of it. Um, and then Agent Bob, and I love that they gave us the alternate chef hat. Agent Bob for the chimichanga truck. Uh, his nice Hail Hydra, you know, Hydra Bob. Uh, and the rocket launcher, it just looks so good. The models are so, so good. Um, all right. And then we gave, look at so many extra sprues. We have so much extra stuff. And for Deadpool, this can turn into so many good things. Um, and we have some extra stuff for Bob as well.
And like I said, we're going to come back with the chimichanga truck. Thank you guys all for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this and want to see more, uh, we will do some actual painting in the next video uh, as well as some other stuff. So if you want to see more of this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I want to say a big thank you again to my um, sponsor, Undiscovered Realms. You guys can check out a link to them below. They got tons of stuff, Funko Pops, trading cards, tabletop games, uh, board games. Uh, they are doing their magic events again. Uh, they ship online. They ship anywhere in the world. Please check them out. Please give them the time of day. They are fun, awesome, good people. Um, and I thank them for all the stuff that they do for me and the hookups they give me on getting the models and letting me review stuff for them and do stuff. And hopefully I'll be doing some Marvel Crisis Protocol events as well as Blood Bowl events over there. So we'll have some live coverage of that when that happens. Uh, also, my gameplay. So check out my other videos. Please do. Uh, my website, my Patreon, and such. My goal is to have a big injection to the Patreon. I keep working on this merchandise stuff. The stuff keeps coming up. So uh, please bear with me, um, but I will get it up and running, and there will be some other tiers and things to go there. But literally for a dollar a day, you can support me. You can also jump and give me a tip or a, a donation. There's a button there for that. Um, all of that helps in getting me able to do more content, more stuff for you guys. So please, if you can, hit me up, let me know, uh, and I'll see you guys tonight for some more videos because we're definitely going to do some more stuff. All right, take care, everybody. I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.